time to put a little spark in this. Today we're talking primers. Guy Miner here from UltimateReloader.com. Today we're going to talk priming. We're going to talk about priming safety. We're going to talk about primer selection. We're going to talk about on-press and off-press priming today. Primers, you got to be careful. Primers can bite. They can, they can get you back. Okay, if you handle them carelessly, if you let your work area get all dirty and nasty, these things can get you. So, what we want to talk about is some safety things here because they will go off sometimes when we don't want them to. And I want to show you right away some of the power that just a primer has. In my revolver, I have some primed cases. That's all they are is 357 Magnums. They're all primed. There's no powder. There's no bullet. And I'm going to use those to show you the strength of just a primer. You can see there's a fair amount of stuff that comes out the end of the muzzle on there. We've got some flame, we've got some sparks. You actually have little particles that sometimes come out. And I've actually seen some of those little particles uh, still hot enough to light, oh, carpet or something on fire. So be real, real careful with your primers. You've got to handle them with care. I learned that very early on in my reloading career when I was about 17 or 18 years old, still at home. And I was loading on one of those old Lee loader kits, just the little box. And you actually have to take a little ram and tap it down in to seat the primer. You're kind of asking for disaster if you do that clumsily. Well, I was 17 or 18 years old. I was a little clumsy at it. Pow, it goes off. And my mom came running on in from the kitchen. She thought I had blown myself up, shot myself, destroyed the house, done something. No, nope, no, nope, it was all OK. But I had to stop reloading right then and there for a while, so no problem. Uh, they will go off if you mishandle them. They can go off. And that's one of the reasons why the manufacturers who build their presses with an on-press priming system, they will usually have a primer a safety tube that goes around your primers. And that, uh, that helps shield you from any blast that might happen. Um, we'll get more into that later, but that's a very important piece of gear to have. Also, the best way to store your primers after you've selected your primers and got them home is in the original packaging. Those packages are designed to minimize the chance of the primers going off. Store them in, in something like that, keep them dry, keep them cool. Uh, they should be no problem whatsoever. I've never had a problem with that. I have heard some horror stories about guys who stored bulk primers in like a glass jar. Not a good idea because they can detonate. And that's with all the power of all those primers combined. Not good. Primer safety probably starts with primer selection. Take a look at your reference book, whether it's whatever manual. I've got the Lyman manual here on the desk. Take a look and see what they recommend for the cartridge you're loading and the powder you're using. That may change things. We're using the 308 Winchester in this basic reloading series. Typically, that just needs your basic large rifle primer. You may go to a match grade primer if you're looking for more accuracy. Uh, rarely, rarely would anyone want to use a um, magnum primer in that case. I don't think I've ever done so. Uh, now, if I'm loading for its big brother, the 300 Winchester Magnum, and maybe I'm going on a late season elk hunt in the Rockies, and temperatures are going to be low, and I've got a great big charge of slow burning powder to ignite, that's what I'm going to use a large rifle magnum primer for, like the Federal 215. That's what it was designed to do, to provide a bigger, stronger spark to more surely ignite that powder charge and get us going, get that big magnum to go boom when we see that big elk out there and it's cold, it's cold out. That can inhibit the burning of the powder too. So you want to make sure you select the right primers. You want to make sure you store them in the original containers. You want to handle them with care, keep from getting any kind of shock or anything on there. Clean off your gear once in a while. There is such a thing as dusting from all this uh, moving around the, the primers, and some of the primer dust will come off. So clean, clean your gear every now and again and make sure that doesn't happen, because that too can ignite. So with primer safety, 
one of the things we want to make sure we do every time we're handling primers is we want to make sure we've got some kind of safety goggles, safety glasses available to us and use them. There is no sense at all in risking blinding yourself, damaging your eyes just because you're messing around with some primers. Um, they can and will hurt you if you let them. Take the extra moment, wear some safety goggles while you're doing that, uh, anything with primers. And with that, we're going to get into on-press priming. A lot of presses come with a priming system already on them, or at least it's in the package and you get to put it all together after you've unboxed your, your new press and put it on there. Lyman has a pretty good system here that works pretty well if you pay attention to what you're doing. Always have to pay attention to what you're doing. I'd like to show you some of the different parts on this. We've got a shield. Okay, this is a, basically a blast shield. It's to keep you safe in case the primers in this tube do, for some strange reason, decide to detonate. Okay, not that that's at all likely. I've never seen that happen, but this heavy tube will keep you safe. The thing you do not want to do is you do not want to get body parts, especially face parts, up here over this. If it does go, the force of the explosion is going that way. Okay, hopefully should not come out at all. This should contain it and drive it away from you. So something to be, be worth thinking about while you're before you prime. To work this, what happens is we've got the we put the primers in the tube. I'll show you that in just a moment. And then we have to move the ram up a little bit. It would have a case in there, unprimed case. We move this forward bring it down and prime that way. Bring it up, should pick up a new primer, and then we could do it again. We'll have a primed case after we've done that. So, let's go ahead and start getting some primers in the tube. Okay, you'll see on the tube here that one end has a small slit in it, and that is the pickup end. And you see I've already got a primer in there. There we go. Okay, we're gonna pick up some primers here. It's very easy to do. Okay, there and there. Now, there was a really cool piece of gear on here that slipped in this hole, but we're just going to use this paper clip because that's what I've got now. Turns it over. Now the primers are down in here. Place the tube, pull that out, put our blast shield on, and let's see about priming some cases. Another case. Yep, picked up a primer just like it's supposed to. Push it in, forward on your press. There we go. Another primed case. It's sitting just flat, very nice. Once you get into a rhythm on this, it actually goes pretty smooth. So we'll make this the last one and we'll move on to hand priming after this. There's times when you might want to prime off the press. I do that a lot using a handheld tool such as this Lyman Easy Prime. And they're a really good piece of gear and it just takes a moment to set them up and use them. The reason I like to use one of these is because I can feel that primer seating into the primer pocket and it just it's just a nice feeling making sure that you get it in there properly. Whereas priming on press you've got to a whole lot of leverage with this big lever over here and here we don't it's just a little handheld tool so it's less effort involved on this and you can feel it better in your hand as that primer seats properly to set this up we're going to need to borrow shell holder here for our 308s we're going to take this part off install our shell holder right here and there we are it's that easy to do. There we go. And 
you see some of these are right side up and some of them are upside down. So we're going to oscillate this and there they are. Now they're all the right direction. And if I put this on without spilling my primers, that'll make me happy. Good. Good to go. Nice. Make sure there's one in there. There is. It's that easy. I find I can actually prime quite a few cases in a hurry with this tool. Simple and easy to use and does a good job. Now, if I need to pause, I can go ahead and get them all out of there so there's nothing in this part of the tool, and then close this little dam, and that will keep the primers from moving on into where I don't want them. Then I can set the tool down, and we are good to go. We've primed cases off press. Very simple, very fast, and it's got a nice feel to it. You know when that primer is fully seated. Probably ought to mention that it's, there's a real tendency when you're using a hand priming tool to point it towards yourself. And you've got that priming operation going on and you want to get the primers to flow down in here and there's a real tendency to want to put it like this. Problem is, then you're putting the primer into the case while it's pointed at your face, which is always a bad idea. Okay, So it's okay to bring it this way, get those primers down the bottom of the tray, and then they'll feed on up into your case just fine, and it's pointed away from you. That's, that's what we want to have happen. So in conclusion, with priming, you do have to be careful. This is one of those kind of touchy operations. You want to be careful. You want to make sure you've got the right primers. You want to make sure that you're familiar with either your on-press or off-press priming and then you want to do it slowly and methodically. You'll get into a rhythm, especially I've found that especially with the hand priming tool, I can get into a good fast rhythm. I can actually prime a lot of cases pretty quickly. Uh, again, like we said in that first video, don't get distracted. Just go ahead and work your way on through. If something goes wrong, stop. Think about it. Maybe a primer gets put in upside down. Set it aside, we can deal with that later, all right? There's a lot of little things that can go wrong in priming. Um, and if something does go wrong, just stop, figure out what's going on, fix it, and get back into your routine. What I want to know is how are you priming your rifle cases? Are you doing it on press? Are you doing it with a handheld tool? If so, which tool are you using? And how's that working out for you? Drop a comment and let's start a discussion. That concludes this video, and it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.